Proposal for the classification of synthetic non-anomalous amnestic agents. Forward. Both the Foundation and its predecessor organizations have relied on memory-affecting agents in order to expunge sensitive data from the minds of unauthorized individuals. Though we have generally classed such agents under the umbrella term amnestics and, less accurately, amnesiacs, we have, in fact, used a wide variety of different agents to accomplish this task. Many of our commonly used amnestics are themselves anomalous, either in origin or mechanism. The fact that amnestics are frequently anomalies themselves effectively renders them Thaumiel class SCPs, recklessly handed out to any MTF, field agent, or researcher who wants them. Furthermore, the collection of these amnestics are often either fraught with danger or are otherwise ethically problematic. Fortunately, neuroscience has advanced significantly since the Foundation was founded and we now have the means to mass-produce non-anomalous amnestic drugs. In addition to being wholly non-anomalous, the next generation of amnestic drugs is expected to be more cost-effective for the Foundation and boast a better safety profile for their subjects. These drugs function primarily by inducing memory deconsolidation, breaking down the neural pathways responsible for encoding episodic memories. The drugs themselves are encased within specially designed nanoparticles, allowing for the targeting of specific areas of the brain, drastically reducing the amount of drug required, as well as side effects. The O5 Council is currently reviewing proposals to gradually phase out the use of traditional amnestics and replace them with non-anomalous alternatives. In order to facilitate this transition among Foundation personnel, we submit the following revisions to the current amnestics classification system. Please note that all classes of amnestics are now available in oral, inhalant, and intravenous forms for the convenience of amnestics officers, and still retain the taste of batteries and peppermint that none of us can remember but always find familiar. Class A, General Retrograde, for erasing recent and or specific episodic memories. While Class A amnestics will technically deconsolidate memories at random, they will mostly affect engrams within the memory reconsolidation window of 5 to 6 hours, as these are memories that will be at the forefront of the subject's mind. This is especially true for highly unique episodic memories, such as encounters with anomalous phenomena. While these will be most effective after initial exposure, it is possible to reopen a memory reconsolidation window, allowing for amnestics officers to trigger and then erase specific memories long after their initial formation. Class B, Regressive Retrograde, for the incremental erasure of recent memories. Class B amnestics start by deconsolidating the most recently formed memories first, and then working their way backwards. The extent of the memory erasure is dependent on dosage, with a 75 mg dose resulting in approximately 24 hours of memory loss on average. These are ideal for erasing recent memories older than 6 hours, without having to trigger specific memories. Class C, Targeted Retrograde, for the removal of specific memories from any point in the subject's life. Class C amnestics are used in conjunction with high-fidelity neuroimaging and transcranial stimulation. Neuroimagers will locate the specific memory engrams within the subject's brain, and upon reaching those specific engrams, the amnestics will be activated through the use of precise, non-invasive stimulation, typically ultrasound or magnetic fields. The benefit of Class C amnestics is that they allow for the surgically precise removal of memories, regardless of when they formed, and are ideal for expunging classified data from the minds of D-class personnel and neutralized humanoid SCPs prior to their release. The major drawback of Class C amnestics is the required equipment's lack of portability. As such, Class C amnestics are most efficiently administered at Foundation sites, though mobile amnestic field clinics are currently under development. Class D Amnestics Progressive Retrograde For the removal of early memories Class D Amnestics are the opposite of Class Bs. They target the oldest memories first and work their way forward. The effects depend on dosage. As this is a fairly niche application, Class D Amnestics are rarely used. Though they are by design more potent than their counterparts, it still requires an extremely high dosage to expunge a significant portion of a subject's life. 
As such, their risk of side effects is highly dangerous. It should be noted that Class D amnestics only target explicit memories. Implicit memories, namely skills that the individual learned in their youth, will remain unaffected. Class E, ennui. To induce psychological complacency with the anomalous. To be frank, ennui isn't actually the proper term for the psychological effects of Class E amnestics. They would more accurately be considered an anti-nostalgia drug. Though they still target the neural pathways for memories, they do not deconsolidate them. Rather, they merely weaken the pathways while disassociating the memory with any emotions, positive or negative, removing any incentive to think about it, and thus allowing it to naturally decay on its own. Class E amnestics are most effective in situations where the suppression of the anomalous is not possible. And thus, in order to preserve normality, the anomaly must be perceived as normal. Class E amnestics cause subjects to accept the world as it is, and forget that it was ever any different. Class F, Fugue, for erasing and rebuilding the subject's identity. As with the old Class F, these amnestics induce a fugue state or dissociative amnesia in the subject. The subject will forget their identity, and may either be provided with a new one by the amnestics officer, or allowed to develop one of their own. Class G, Gaslighting to cause subjects to doubt the authenticity of their memories. Class G amnestics induce derealization of memories, making them seem fantastic or dreamlike, causing the subject to doubt their authenticity. Standard field class G amnestics are formulated to target memories of the anomalous and are best administered when the subject lacks any tangible evidence of their account, and targeting specific memories is infeasible. Class G amnestics that target non-anomalous memories, however, are currently under development at the request of the O5 Council. Class H, Anterograde, to prevent the formation of new memories. Class H amnestics prevent the subject from forming new memories, blocking memory consolidation for as long as the agent is in the subject's system. Duration is dependent on dosage, with 75 milligrams lasting for approximately 24 hours on average. Class I, Transient, for inducing a temporary amnesic state. Class I amnestics induce transient amnesia by blocking the neural pathways responsible for long-term memories, temporarily preventing subjects from recalling their past. Duration is dependent on dosage, again with 75 milligrams lasting approximately 24 hours on average. Class W to Z nestics. Protection against antimimetic and other mnemonic anomalies. Classes W to Z refer to nestic drugs, or drugs that prevent reverse memory erasure, and are commonly used by the anti-memetics department. Though in function they are the opposite of amnestics, they both work by targeting the neural pathways for memory, allowing for the creation of non-anomalous nestic drugs. Class W nestics allow the subject to perceive and retain knowledge of anti-memes, in addition to general memory enhancement. Class X restores awareness of previously preserved antimemes or suppressed memories. Class Y grants the subject perfect recall for any memories gained during its period of effect, and a single dose of Class Z renders the subject biochemically incapable of forgetting anything for the remainder of their lives. Class Zs are invariably fatal, with death by seizure typically resulting in a matter of hours. Combining amnestic and nestic drugs is not recommended. Report to Overseer Council regarding the ethics of non-anomalous amnestics. Overseers, though I am well aware of the numerous ethical and practical drawbacks of conventional amnestics, I regret to inform you that a previously unforeseen complication of non-anomalous amnestics has recently come to light. The very fact that they are non-anomalous makes it possible for civilians to create their own crude amnestic drugs. How the formulas were leaked is still being investigated. But the fact remains that people are now cooking up street amnestics in improvised labs like crystal meth. Sexual assault is, as one would imagine, the most common crime it is implicated in, but it's no doubt used to cover up all sorts of abuse, criminal, corporate, and government alike. Some people take it willingly to try to expunge their own unwanted memories, but even then, the strength of these street formulas vary wildly. Individuals who overdose will end up with enormous chunks of random memories missing, sometimes crucial implicit memories, and are reduced to vegetative states. 
Bad batches are all too common, resulting in permanent brain damage or even death. Rumors of how they are being used by numerous authoritarian regimes are rampant, but since I wasn't able to confirm any of these horror stories myself, I wouldn't bother repeating them here. The media has dubbed this outbreak of amnestics abuse the forgotten epidemic, and it's our fault. We made this stuff, and it's because of our negligence it's on the streets. Surely we have some responsibility to ameliorate this abuse. I recommend that we delay the full implementation of non-anomalous amnestics until we have determined the source of the security breach and taken measures to prevent a second occurrence in the future. The Foundation should fund the efforts of law enforcement to track down street amnestic producers and then administer Class C amnestics to wipe the formulas from their minds. The old amnestics may not have been perfect, but the human cost of using them has already been dwarfed by their non-anomalous equivalents. If we make it a priority, we can get this stuff off the street and bring the forgotten epidemic to an end. Doctor… Doctor, thank you for bringing this matter to our attention. As regrettable as the situation may be, the fact that these street amnestics are non-anomalous places their illicit use well outside the Foundation's authority. By unanimous vote, the O5 Council has decided that the new generation of non-anomalous amnestics will be deployed as scheduled and that no Foundation resources will be diverted to prevent or regulate their use among civilians. O5-4 End of file to learn more about the SCP Foundation, subscribe to SCP Orientation today and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any of our videos.